everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a cook with me video and this is actually probably one of my family's favorite meals that I make and I know it's one of Dan's favorites and it's just a good old lasagna but it's actually got a bit of a twist and it's that that makes it that little bit more exciting and a nicer recipe than others that I've tried. This is the Gina De Campo recipe. It was recommended to me by a friend and it's the only lasagna recipe that I follow now. It is so good. So if you wanna know what the difference is and what makes it that little bit more special, then stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly what you need and how to make it. So for the meat sauce, you'll need an onion, whatever your preference is. I usually use red actually, but I happen to have these white sweet onions, so I'm going to use those. At least three cloves of garlic, depending again on your taste, but I would put in at least three or four two medium size or one very large carrot, some lean minced beef. I'm using a large packet of 750 grams just because I want to make more, but I think the recipe actually asks for a 500 gram packet, so you just suit it to your family's needs. Then you will need some passata or chopped tomatoes. My kids can be quite fussy about bits of tomato, so I tend to use passata. You'll also need some olive oil to fry the onion, garlic, and carrots in at the beginning, and then some salt and pepper to season as well. Then you'll need your lasagna sheets. The recipe actually asks for fresh ones, which I've used in the past, but I happen to have these dried lasagna sheets in the cupboard, so I'm just gonna use those. I would just adjust your cooking time slightly for a little bit longer if you're not using the fresh lasagna sheets. Then for the cheese sauce, you will need butter. I always use salted just to give it a little bit extra flavor. Some plain flour, milk, cheese of your choice. I tend to put in some cheddar and grated Parmesan just to give it depth of flavor. And then this is the special ingredient. You're going to need some green pesto and you're going to put that into your white sauce to add a really lovely Italian pesto basil flavor. And trust me, it makes all the difference. So I'm sure you've all made lasagna lots of times, there's nothing particularly groundbreaking about this recipe, but I will show you step by step how I make it and how I assemble the lasagna as well, because how I used to do it is quite different to how Gino De Campo does it in his recipe. So let's get cooking because it's already about five o'clock and this takes a good hour and a half. And that's another thing in the summer holidays. I feel like we all eat so much later in the day that myself and Dan are used to that and the older kids are fine, but I find it's quite hard for the younger kids to hold out until six-ish to eat their dinner. They're usually ravenous by that point, so I'd better get a wriggle on. So the first thing you're going to do is chop up your onion. I always chop mine as small as I can possibly do it, just because Aiden will spend ages fishing out all the bits of onion if he can see big pieces. So I just chop it up quite finely, and then I grate up my carrots and add those both into the pan with some olive oil. Just to start cooking away whilst I get on with peeling my garlic cloves. So as I said, I tend to use about three or four, depending on the size, garlic cloves, and I just mince those in my garlic press doodah and put those in once the onions and carrot have softened. So it's at this point I will add the minced beef and I will let that brown slightly and I will also season it with some sea salt and black pepper at the same time. Once the meat has browned, I will add in the cartons of passata. I also add in a pinch of sugar at this point. I always add it to my tomato-based sauces. It just kind of takes away some of the acidity in the tomatoes and just gives a nice flavor. So I'll add in maybe a teaspoon of sugar. So for the white sauce, you just want to melt a good size knob of butter in a pan. I tend to put a bit of olive oil in with that as well. I'm not sure why, it's just a habit I've got into, but it seems to work well for me. Once that's melted down, I will add some flour into the pan. And I again, I do this by eye and I just add it until I have a consistency of a paste. I'll just leave that to heat through slightly before adding in my milk. I add the milk in very slowly so that it thickens well and doesn't go lumpy. If at any stage I get lumps in the sauce, I'll just get a whisk and whisk it out and that tends to work really well. Once I've added all the milk that I want to add and it's at the consistency that I want, I will start to add in the cheese. So I start with the grated Parmesan, which is obviously ready grated. And then whilst that's melting into the sauce, I will grate some cheddar. I tend to add more cheese than the recipe states when it comes to lasagna, we seem to like our lasagna quite cheesy so again that's personal preference but I do tend to add a little bit more than it says in the recipe. 
Then once that's all melted and you have your sauce at the consistency you want, you can add in your pesto. Again, I add quite a lot because I like the taste that it gives, so I would say at least half the jar, if not two thirds. Then give it a good stir to combine it all together, and then you have this lovely green cheese sauce, which looks a bit off-putting, but trust me, it tastes amazing. So then we come to the best bit, which is assembling it all, and the thing I love about Gino's recipe is that he has loads of layers of pasta, and I just love the pasta in the lasagna. And other recipes I've followed have maybe two layers, but this one, he actually has four. And sometimes I don't have enough lasagna, so I'll only put in three. So again, personal preference thing, it's up to you, but I quite like that he puts in so many layers. But what I like about it is it makes the lasagna quite easy to cut and like take out of the pan, because sometimes it can be quite sloppy, can't it? And quite difficult to portion. So I'm guessing that's why he does it. And what, Gino does in his recipe that is a game changer, but is definitely extra calories that you don't need in a lasagna, but I do it anyway because it's delicious, is that he adds some cold cubed butter to the top of your lasagna, and even saying it out loud just feels like such an unnecessary step, but trust me, I don't know what it is, it just adds something amazing to the top of your lasagna, so if you can bear to put those extra calories into your dinner, then it's well worth it for a treat. I don't make this lasagna very often. It's a once a month, maybe once every other month kind of thing. So when I do make it, I go to town and I add the butter to the top. So again, up to you how much you put on and whether you put it on at all. But I just put a couple of little cubes of cold butter on the top before you put it in the oven. Then it goes in the oven at 180 for about 45 minutes and once the time is up, you're gonna want to let it sit for at least 10 to 15 minutes out of the oven just to solidify a bit because it can be quite saucy. And giving it that extra 10 minutes to just cool down a bit makes it an edible temperature as opposed to nuclear so well worth leaving it for those 10 minutes as well so that is in my opinion the best lasagna recipe that i've ever come across and i've tried quite a few so if you're gonna try it please let me know in the comments below if you do make it let me know what you thought i'd love to hear from you thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video let me know if you'd like to see more cook with me style videos i'd be happy to do them don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i will see you in my next one bye